when we start looking at the parent child relationship as like a co-creation versus like this hierarchy of power, it really is a powerful thing. It really is because then we're allowing our child to also have a say in their in in the way they are parented, which freaks adults out. Like, why are you letting your child? Yes, I am letting her have a say in how she is parented. And I'm not talking about the dangerous stuff, y'all, because that's what yeah. everybody wants to say. They want to go to the most extreme case. I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about little things like guidelines for the house. There has to be some accountability for parents as well as children. If you allow them, you guys have family meetings and you sit and you talk about, um, in a kind of a restorative justice sort of way where you're, let's discuss conflict, let's hash it out, let's not bury it. And you will, you teach them how to do that, but you're also allowing them to do it instead of just something happens to them and they just have to accept what happens to them. It's powerful for them. It is a life lesson that they will take with them through every relationship. So for conscious parenting, it feels like a lot for folks who have never, who don't have, one, who, who weren't parented that way, and two, who don't have a model. So you're kind of going it alone. But that's why I suggest finding groups, finding um, courses or finding like a conference somewhere where you can get in community with people so you can, so you don't feel so alone, especially if your parents or your uh, family are, are against it or don't understand it. You really need people who do around you. Thing you just shared, you were talking about like people jump to the extreme case. That's mm -hmm. the same exact situation that happens if you talk about abolition. All of a sudden, yes. like in someone's mind, it's like a bunch of serial rapists are running around, like killing everybody. <laughs> right. And and that's not it. But like, how do we get to a society that is rooted in restorative justice? It goes together. A lot of parents, what I notice, will say stuff to me like, well, I don't let them do this at home because when they go to school, they won't be able to do this. Or when they, it, when they get a job, they won't be able to do this. So you're preparing them for the oppressive world. And I'm not doing that. I am preparing my child for a liberated world. I refuse to prep her to be oppressed. Don't do that, y'all. And it, and it feels like you have to, right? Because you want to keep your kids safe and you don't want them to be targets. But really what you're doing is you're prepping them to stay oppressed and to accept oppression. Mm -mm, ain't nobody got time for that. We need to be doing, we need to be, we need to be prepping them for the world that we want, that we envision, that we're imagining. That's what we need to be doing. And it's hard. And that's where, that's why community is important, but that's also why imagination is important. Because if you don't even know what your, what, what this new world looks like, then what, how do you, how do you know how to move within it? You know? And we have to be willing to challenge, you know, the people in our lives that aren't moving that way, that want to be around our children, um, the educators, the educational system, you know, all of those, you know, the education system operates from a power over perspective. It's really inherently violent. And so we have to be willing, if you have to have your child in mainstream um, conventional school, then you have to be willing to say, okay, well, I need to figure out how I can advocate for some, you know, restorative justice practices or abolition, abolitionist practices within the school. You, you have a voice. And I think that's what happens when with mainstream parenting is it makes people feel like they don't have a voice. All these adults walking around, like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to change things. It's because you were taught that you couldn't. And you were taught that you, that you didn't have a voice and that it didn't matter no matter what you did and said was not important. And that's just not the case. You have power, you are important, you matter, just like your kids do. And you can actually make a huge difference if you step into that power.